for the victories you won. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor John Pope from Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. And we want to thank you for the privilege of allowing us to come into your home today. I pray that as you join us in this service, that God is going to bless you in a number of different ways. I believe that there's a blessing that's coming through the scripture. There's a blessing that's going to come through the word. There's a blessing that's going to come through the song, through the prayers. God is just going to bless. And we just ask you to join with us as we lift up the name of Jesus. So come on, everybody. Let's go to church. I'm going to ask the deacons now if they would come and if they would just uh, lead us in scripture and prayer. I'm Deacon Wilson. I'll be doing the prayer. And Brother Mary is going to read the scriptures for us this morning. Good morning, church. If you would turn with me to the 103rd Psalm. I'm also glad to be here this morning in the house of the Lord, Amen. giving them praise. Uh -huh. If you're there at the mind saying amen. amen, it reads like this. I'm in the King James Version. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forever, from the raising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations. His glory, the heavens, who is like the Lord our God, who dwells on high, who humbles himself to behold. The things that are in the heavens and in the earth, he raises the poor out of the dust. Amen. And he lifts the needy out of ash heap, that he may seat him with princesses. With the princes of the, his people, he grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, brother. You may be seated. All eyes closed, all head bowed, as we go to the throne of glory this morning. I'm a precious Heavenly Father. Once again, Father, we come to you just with, say, thank you, Master, for your thanksgiving and your many choice blessings that you have spared us last week and master we thank you for what you're going to do for us this week father bless each and every one within the sound of my voice this morning father we thank you for the saints that's here master and we thank you for the ones that's on the way father we just thank you for so many things that you have done of us here at galilee with this church father just continue to guide us and keep us in your love and honor protection father just be with us just breathe on us master which only you can do. Father, we, we come with you this morning. Father, I come with you with a heavy heart this morning, Father. I'd like to say I would like to put my church family to pray for me this morning. I lost my brother last night. Father, just be with my siblings. Continue to keep them in your love and arm and text, Master. And let them know, Father, they all too may go, have to go this way. Father, I, I thank you for my brother for the number of years that you spared him. Father, but you know what's best, Master. And certain things we have to accept. Father, I thank you for the number of years he's been here with you. He shared his love with me. Now, Master, I thank you for each church door that opened in your namesake in our fair city. Father, just bless him and have him to be with you. You want it to be master. Father, let me say a special prayer for this old country and land which we live in. Just breathe on them, master. Just touch, master. There's so many things going on in the world, Father. Not like Christ's life. But, Father, we know whose we are and whom we are. 
Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Most of all, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary, who shed his precious blood that may have this abundant life. Master, I do give thanks. And Father, I thank you for me, Lord. Father, let me decrease while you increase in my own life, Master. For turning the light on my life one more time. For Father, you pick me out the mercury and the morning clay. Do it, turn my life around. And Master, I know if you can do it for me, you can do it for anybody. That's why we say a prayer for the, the sinner man and the sinner woman. Master, come and have them come running to the church the house door and say, Lord, Lord, whoo, what must we do in order to be saved? Yes, sir. We want to say thank you, Master. Father, we thank you for our pastor and the first lady. Father, continue to keep him in your love and on protection and their family. Give two, Lord, that love go from heart to heart and from breast to breast, Master. We thank you for every church auxiliary here at our church, Master. Continue to bless it, Master, with only you can. Now, Master, when I come to the end of my road and I'm called up yonder, to go where the streets is paved with gold, and they say every day will be like Sunday. Master, I was, I was going to start like I always say, Master, just you know, giving you the praise in which you so rightfully deserve. Because you woke me up this morning. And as brothers in there do, when you breathe in and breathe out, you know you're a child of God because you're still living. Oh, we thank you, Master. Everybody in the church, I should say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Good God Almighty. Oh, how sweet it is. Oh, how sweet it is, Master. Well, then when I come to the end of my road, say my last prayer and sing my last song, just please, Master, remember me. Your poor and I'm a servant. Well, when I've done all I can have done, and I'm laid to rest, and I press the sun, Jesus Christ's name, we pray for evermore. Amen. Thank you. Our God is worthy to be praised. Amen. I said amen. God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy to be praised. And we just want to thank him for who he is and what he's done. I want to tell you that God opens doors for ministry. For any and everybody who wants to engage in ministry, God will open doors. As we start today, amen, amen. As we start today, I want to give you a testimony on what happened yesterday. We had an opportunity to go and participate in the Harvest Fest that was hosted by Blackshear Heritage Family. And as we were out in the park, we were there, we were able to uh, give people materials about the church. But more importantly, there were a number of people who stopped by the table and said, we just won't pray. So here's what I thank God for. We had an opportunity to pray for some young people, some parents, some grandparents. Hallelujah for some people who were just walking through the park. We had an opportunity to pray with them and for them. And what I want to say is we thank God for that opportunity, for opening that door to go outside the wall and to be able to, to minister to the people who want to hear. See, sometimes we think that people don't want to hear about the Lord, but in reality, they want to hear about the Lord. Amen. They, they want a blessing from God. But I'll tell you that sometimes our walls are an obstacle. Either because of something that has happened to them before. Or a perception. They won't come inside the wall. So saints, I want to share this with you. Be intentional about engaging in ministry wherever you go. Take Jesus with you wherever you go. And don't think that everybody is anti-God. Everybody is not. 
everybody has their own experiences and some people have a difficult time, however comma. They still want somebody to share Jesus with them. They still want somebody to pray for them and pray with them. And one thing that I heard over and over again is that they wanted to know that nobody was going to, to judge them. I said, listen, we're not about judging, but we are about telling the truth. So if there's a truth that you need, we want to tell you the truth. That's not being judgmental, but that's helping you to understand what's really going on. Because sometimes people don't really know what's going on. Amen. So share God in love wherever you go. Share God in love wherever you go. And you may find that there's going to be a whole lot more people that are receptive to what we have to share. Amen. 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 All right. Let me get the tears out of my eyes. We give God the glory for everything because the word lets us know that all things come of the Lord and, and everything that we give to him of thine own have we given unto thee. In other words, when we give up an offering, when we give up the tithe, when we give up a special offering, all we're doing is just giving God back giving back to God what is rightfully his. Because before the preacher comes, we're going to have the choir that's going to sing a selection. But as we get ready to plow the ground, somebody needs to set the teal. And asking each and every one of you to help set the teal. Now here's how you're going to set the teal in the ground. I want you to just point your hand to Reverend Sinet, and I want you to do this vibrantly. I want you to say, Reverend Sinet. We need you to preach the word. We need you to preach the word. Reverend Sinet. We need to hear what God has to say. So come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Preach that word. Come on, preacher. Preach that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We had 10,000 times we couldn't thank you enough, but we just want to say thank you one more time. Thank you. My Lord, my Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we just want to say thank you one more time. Father, we thank you for assembling us one more time in this place called Sanctuary. Father, you have a way of assembling your people like none other. And Father, when you assemble your people in a place like this, you assemble them for a purpose. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray right now that you reign supreme in this place. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you take this humble servant of yours, this man's servant. And Father, we pray that he decreases so that you can increase. And Father, that your word comes through like a mighty rushing stream. And somebody hears what you would have them to hear. And Father, we pray that they become disillusioned with the world right now and come running and asking, what can we do to be saved? And Father, we'll praise you for it. Father, I pray that you use me today as you would see fit for the uplifting and edification of your kingdom. And Father, I give you the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. I would like to give honor and praise where honor and praise is due. First of all, I would like to give all honor and praise to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the master of my life. And for those in my family, I can speak for my wife in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to show appreciation and love for the master I mean, for the shepherd of this house and my father in the ministry, Reverend John Scott Pope, Jr. I would also like to give recognition and love to his, first, to his wife and lovely bride and our first lady, Minister Gloria Pope. And I would be remiss if I didn't recognize my lovely bride, Sister Garland Sinette. I want to thank you for putting up with me. I want to thank you for recognizing and appreciating my calling in life. I want to thank you for being my helpmeet and not my hellmate. And I want to thank you for maintaining a, a safe and healthy environment for me to come home to every evening. Like I said, I bring home the bacon, but you make it taste good.
Well, that's about all I got to say about that. <laughs> Well, you, you told me to be me. There is a word from the Lord that I would like to share with you. So if you would, would you uh, stand to your feet? while we read uh, the word of God and it can be found in Ezekiel the 22nd chapter starting with the 23rd verse Ezekiel the 22nd chapter the 23rd starting with the 23rd verse <clears throat> And the word of God reads on this wise. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey they have devoured souls they have taken the treasure and precious things they have made her many widows in the midst thereof her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things they have put no difference between the holy and profane Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken, the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the, for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Therefore, I have poured out mine I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their head, says the Lord God. You may be seated in the presence of our almighty God. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Standing in the gap. This morning I believe that I can truthfully say without any fear of successful contradiction that we are living in perilous times. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are living in perilous times. And there are 
difficult days ahead. Let me say that one more time. We are living in perilous times, and there are difficult days ahead. I wish I had, oh, I wish I had two or three more Bible scholars in here with me this morning, because they would help me testify this morning about what Second Timothy, the third chapter, the first through the seventh verse, what it says about these times that we find ourselves in. Yes, and this is what they say. It says, this know also, uh -huh. that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, yes, boasters, uh -huh. proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent. Let me stop on that word. Incontinent means out of control, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heedy, high-minded, Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, we are definitely living in perilous times, and there are difficult days ahead. But let me please emphasize the fact. I need to let you know this before we even go any further. That if something don't happen, and I know that's bad English. If something don't happen, then soon and very soon, something definitely is going to happen. Well, 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 well. Let me say that one more time. If something don't happen, then soon and very soon, something is bound to happen. My Lord. Uh -huh. And you can, take, you can take that to the bank. Let's take a look at what's going on in our world today. The conduct, the creeds, and the opinions of the world have found their way not only into our culture, but they have found their way into our homes. Crime is on the uprise. Sin is on the increase. Uh, the majority of our news is very depressing. I don't know about you, but uh, I don't look at all the news because it's depressing. Uh, our entertainment, as well as our news, our entertainment uh, is designed to, to highlight uh, not the goodness but it's designed to highlight the sinful nature of man. Uh huh. We want to see how how sinful uh, uh, they can present themselves. Uh huh. Uh, it's designed to to highlight not only man's sinful nature, but his depravity. To see how depraved uh, he can present himself. Things that that used to uh, 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 be whispered about but uh, now shouted from the rooftops things that used to be done in the dark are now being put on display for everybody to see from the television to social media y'all can say amen if you want to I won't be mad at you people are now taking pride 
in their sinfulness. They want everybody to see and know how ignorant and how uh, stupid they can act. Everybody now is, is uh, uh, like Pastor said the other night in, in, in prayer meeting. Uh, 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 nobody is talking about love. You see, uh, you can get cussed out on TV now. I remember they doing stuff on TV now. They used to shut the whole station down. Yeah, yeah, Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, my brother and sister, before I go any further, I want to let you know something. God is not pleased with the state of man's affairs. So uh, it's time for somebody to stand in the gap. So the question should be asked, who will stand in the gap? Who will stand in the gap? There's a, uh, a, a TV commercial that comes on, and, and there are a lot of people there in different scenarios, and they're asking questions. Who got my back? Who got my back? And they say, I got your back. I got your, who got my back? Who got my back? We got your back. We got your back. Who will stand in the gap? All right. All right. Every time I, I I'm, I'm trembling now. Every time I think about standing in the gap. I, 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 I listen for Coach Raylon Dillons. I listen for him, his voice on the sidelines. Play nice now, Sinet. Play nice now. Because I played that monster man position, middle linebacker. And on the goal line stand, when the cheerleaders were saying, hold that line, Eagles, hold that line. Hold that line, Eagles, hold that line. I look over to my right and I would see all to my left and I would see Coach Dillon and he would do this. And I would say, red dog, red dog. And I'd do my hand like that. That means everybody, everybody plug all holes. Plug all holes. Yeah. Red dog, red dog. Yeah. Who will stand? In the gap. As we look at the text this morning, we find that uh, the people of Judah has turned away, willfully turned away from God. Much like people we find today. And was about to incur the wrath of God. Let me stop right there. God put something on my spirit about 2 o'clock this morning. And I don't want you to quote this for me saying this is what's going on. But the question came to my mind. What is this if this pandemic that we find ourselves in? What if this is the wrath of God? I've had enough of y'all. I'm fixing to get your attention. I'm not saying that's what it is, but that question came to my mind. You see, because when God has had enough, he has a way of letting his people know, look, I've had enough. And I'm going to give you a chance to do something about it, but I've had enough. Because we see some things that some of us have never seen. We hear words now that we've never heard. We find ourselves in situations that we never found ourselves. We have been shut off from things that we are used to. See, I'm used to hugging folk. I'm used to being up close and personal with people. That's just the type of person that I am. But now I got to stand back about six feet from people. I got to wear a mask like I'm a bank robber. And, 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 and all of this pandemic, these words that we have never used in our lexicon, now they're becoming the words that uh, uh, even school children know now. The pandemic. But maybe God has had enough and he's giving us an opportunity for somebody to stand in the gap. You see, I, I, I'm a firm believer 
as bad as them people was down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. On, if they had a had somebody to stand in the gap, they wouldn't have got into the trouble that they got into. So who will stand in the gap? Uh, the prophet has told us, or the book has told us, that we see that they've turned away from God and they've worshipped. They start worshipping idols, just like backsliding Israel. She failed to keep the Sabbaths, which were tokens of the covenant that was made with God. Uh -huh. Judah no longer trusted God, but made alliances with foreign nations. And the prophet points out the sins of Jerusalem and her appending doom. Uh -huh. So again, the question needs to be asked, who will stand in the gap? Too many people are standing around on the sidelines while our strongholds are being bombarded. Just standing on the sidelines waiting for somebody to do something while our institutions have come under attack. Our, uh, uh, our, our, our core values are now being questioned. Even the very existence of God has began to be, you see, it's fashionable now. It, it, it's fashionable now to question the very existence of God whether he exists or not. Uh, our institutions are being brought under assault now. Marriage means uh, nothing now. The Bible tells me that marriage is a, 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 a holy union between one woman and one man. That's what the Bible says. But now I, I tremble and my, my, my wife have to, have to comfort me. When I see people on the TV, uh, my name is Bill and that's my lovely husband over there, Bob. Three dollars, three. Three dollars. See, the Bible does not support, and I know I might get in trouble with somebody, but, that, but I'm all right with that. I'm not putting nobody down. I love the sinner, but I just hate to sin. And, and, and our, our children are, have come under attack. They've been attacked from without and from within. You see, uh, 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 this generation is being raised by the television. And the television has made it all right for them to rebel against their parents. Kind of remind me of the prodigal son had nerve to come to his dad and say, look, uh, I want uh, my portion of your money. <laughs> I, I want my, uh, my, my portion of your money so I can go out and do my thing. He didn't even have no money. See, he, his daddy had to, had to fund his rebellion. Uh -huh. Here I am uh, 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 clothing you feeding you, make sure that you got lights on that you can study, trying to teach you morals and values, and here you are telling me you ain't gonna wash no dishes. Something is wrong with that, with that picture. Something is very wrong with that picture. Can I get a witness? Uh-huh. And nobody wants to say nothing about it. And when you speak up about it, they make you the bad guy. Uh -huh. Or oh, you're, 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 you're a dinosaur living in the jet age. Uh -huh. You don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about the way things used to be. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, when things were like they used to be, the penitentiary wasn't full.
the essentiality of baptism, obedience to God, Bible authority, marriage slash divorce, and remarriage, all of these are facing bombardments from both within and from both uh, without. Many people are, are, are now uh, preoccupied with worldly concerns. Uh -huh. Girl, did you see what happened on, on the, the little housewives from Atlanta or wherever they're from? <laughs> Or, 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 or did you see? Uh, did you did you see what they did on on uh, what uh, Victor Newman said on the uh, the, the the story? We 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 will become preoccupied with stuff. What's the what's the box scores? Who won the game last night? It's not about. Uh, uh, I need to call pastor, I need to call Deacon Mockins, I need to call somebody, a Deacon or a Wilson, I need to find out, is anybody in the hospital sick? What, I, I, who, who needs prayer right now? What can I do to, uh, 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 to help somebody? Uh -huh. So preoccupied uh, uh, with, with outside uh, stuff. Uh -huh. uh, uh, many are thinking that our cry is a much ado about nothing. Hallelujah. Why are you so worried about if two men love each other? They got a right to be what they want to be. Okay. But what does God say about the situation? <laughs> there are some things that they teach in school. Until I can understand now, while people have started taking their children out of school and homeschooling them. You see, because if I go to the schoolhouse and talk to my, 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 my child's uh, teacher and I see somebody with some red, green, yellow, uh, 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 blue hair with a mohawk this tall, and I'm thinking that's somebody's child, and she said, Daddy, that's my teacher right there. You see, I got a problem with that when you can't tell the teacher from the student. Many say, that's all you need, and they talk to us preachers about that. You need to preach Jesus. That's all you need to do, and leave the issues alone. You see, but it's impossible, uh huh, uh, 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 because uh, 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 we can't preach Jesus uh, because preach, to preach Jesus is to preach the issues, uh -huh. especially those issues that He is concerned with. Can I get a witness? Many are waiting for someone else to stand for them. Yeah, uh, who got my back? But my question is, whose back do you have? Who got my back? Well, whose back do you have? You see, we, 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 we serve a God who loves us in spite of us. And he has given each and every one of us. He's given us a solution to the problem that's going on. And I know that I'm not the smartest or the sharpest knife in the draw. But I'm not the dullest either. And I know if I can see what God says, why can't others see it? See, in order for our land to get healed, he told us there are some things that we need to do. He put it in the Bible. He said, if the people who are called by name, if they what? And do what? And do what? And then do what? And then do what? And guess what he said? Then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. But see, it seems like we have a problem turning from our wicked ways. And we have a problem praying uh, when everything is all right. See, you, you can't beat us praying. Uh, we'll send up some timbers when the light bill is due. You know, we'll send up some timbers when, when, when uh, 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 the car note is due or the rent is due. You see, we have a problem of uh, 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 seeking God's face because we know when we seek God's face, we might not get an answer that we're comfortable with. 
Come on now. Come on. Uh-huh. But we are, we are waiting for somebody else to stand for us. When we need to be standing for somebody. Many are inviting, please listen to this, many of us are inviting the adversary to have his way with us. And the way we are doing that, by doing absolutely nothing. You see, my silence means my consent. Uh -huh. See, see, the only way or the best way for evil to prevail is when good men do nothing. When good men do nothing, then it's easy for evil to prevail. Y'all can say like, amen if you want to. So, who should be standing in the gap? Those who love God and who love his word. You see, because if you love God, guess what you're going to do? You're going to be obedient to God. You're not going to do anything or say anything that you feel that would be offensive to God. Your obedience is a sign of your love. You're going to have faith in God because this is what you know. You know that uh, 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 your faith, it is impossible. The scripture says it, it is impossible to please God. And if we love him, we want to please him. So, so, so we're going to, we're going to please God. We're going to pray. That our faith don't fail. Yes, Amen. Amen. Those that have and hope uh -huh. to benefit from the truth. Yes, See, the truth is, there is a new Jerusalem. A yes. uh, 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 Revelation 21st chapter talks about that. Where things are going to be different from the way they are now. They tell me that if I if I'm born twice, that I, I don't have to die but one time. Uh, I don't have to worry about the second death. Uh, the scripture tells me that uh, uh, in that new Jerusalem, there will be no more, I call it the city of no more. There will be no more hurt, no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears. Because he says that he will wipe away all tears. And I have a hope in that. That one day, not when my number is called or my number is up, but when my name is called, I'll be somewhere, somewhere listening for my name. Uh -huh. That's the truth. Preachers uh, is included in this. Brotherhoods are included in this. Amen. And then all who have obeyed the truth, whether it be elders, teachers, professors, parents, or children. And I'm not going to hold you long. But what are the consequences for not standing in the gap? What are the consequences of denying God's truth? Compromise of the truth? See, I believe that a half-truth is a whole lie. Uh -huh. A half-truth is a whole, a whole lie. Abandonment of the truth, where we turn away from God's truth. Uh, indignation and ungodliness. And we know when we uh, start uh, 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 witnessing ungodliness, we know the next thing that we can expect is the indignation and wrath of Almighty God. Can I witness? And as I conclude, as I conclude, I want you to know that the gap is real. The gap is real and it needs, it needs feeling and it's broadening rapidly. That means that we need more to stand in the gap. And we know that more and more people are refusing to stand in the gap. Let us not have to experience God's wrath. See, we don't have to experience his wrath before we decide to stand in the gap and support those who do. 
My question now is, my brothers and my sisters, will you stand in the gap? Hallelujah. Will you stand in the gap? We serve in all time, on time, all loving God, all wise God, who has promised us some things. He has promised to keep us in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. He has promised to be a friend that will stick closer than a brother. He has promised us that he would not forsake us and he would not leave us alone. And he has, he has shown us that he can do anything except fail. We serve an almighty God. So as I go to my seat, my brothers and sisters, will you stand in the gap? The choice is yours. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a good time we had today in the worship hour. You know what? It's interesting that God will work and he will centralize a message. And that message will come from many different places. When we get ready in, to engage in ministry, one of the things that we must realize is that ministry must be intentional. And that's what Reverend Sinet was telling us today when he said that we have to stand in the gap. Somebody, somebody needs what we have to offer. The question is, will we be the ones that will stand in the gap for somebody else? Will we be the ones that will stand on the wall and pray a person through their situation? Will we be the ones that will do what God is calling us to do? If we're all doing what God has called us to do, if we're all using our gifts to glorify the name of the Lord, I tell you what, the name of the Lord is going to be lifted up. The light of the church is going to shine. And there are going to be those souls who will be saved, those souls who will be delivered, those souls who will be helped. So let's do our best to stand in the gap for somebody else. My brothers and my sisters, we want to thank you for joining us today. If you're ever here in San Angelo, Texas, we invite you to come and join us in the worship hour every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 721 West 19th Street. We would love to have the opportunity to show you some love and to love on you. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Until next week, have a blessed day. Fought for me, for the victories you won.